We're here with Craig Watkins. Craig, what, what is it about the session you're chairing at the DML conference that excites you the most? Well, I'm really sort of excited about this whole strand of panels and workshops and invited sessions that we're doing around uh, young people's engagement with, with digital media, particularly uh, this idea of sort of um, young voices and youth activism. And, and, you know, the whole sort of theme of the conference, the thrust of the conference to surround this idea of sort of designing for future learners. And so I'm excited uh, that this conference really sort of promises to offer not only a vision, right, but, but also some, some really concrete ideas about how we can sort of use social media and build digital media tools to empower young learners, to build young learners. Uh, despite a lot of the concerns and anxieties around young people's engagement with technology, this conference suggests, right, that there's some really interesting opportunities that opportunities that can be leveraged if we simply sort of allow our creativity and imagination uh, to take hold. So what, what are some of the, the issues that, uh, that you're wrestling with in, in, in regard to this subject? You know, I think, um, you know, some of the issues that I'm uh, kind of grappling with in, in terms of this, this, this topic is really beginning to think in more nuanced ways about what are both the risks and the opportunities associated with young people's deeper and deeper immersion into the social media universe. Um, and more specifically, trying to understand how those risks and opportunities are kind of unevenly distributed across um, our social landscape. So in terms of, for example, how the familial environment and context, parental education and, and technology literacy impacts how kids are engaged with technology, thinking about social geography and space and race and ethnicity. Uh, I think we are sort of at an, an interesting point where we understand that those, you know, old sort of narratives about the digital divide are no longer really in place today. And really thinking about the kinds of dramatic shifts that have kind of occurred over the last 10 years or so, and how it establishes some really interesting risks and opportunities for communities that we haven't necessarily uh, always associated with being engaged with technology, but increasingly are engaged. That's, you know, Latino youth, African American youth, a youth, uh, you know, growing up in less affluent households and communities, immigrant youth, uh, you know, youth who don't speak English. And so there's just this wealth of opportunities to really think about, again, in some creative and imaginative ways, what young people are actually doing with technology, but also understanding the sort of things that structure uh, and facilitate their engagement with technology. Such as? You know, I would say, for example, you know, there, there, there are all kinds of interesting experiments that are happening out there in, in, in our communities today. And we really are sort of trying to d build this conference in such a way that, that brings a lot of the, the, the teachers and educators and community and technology activists to the table for some very rich conversations about, you know, how, uh, you know, efforts and strategies and visions to build uh, new models models of learning, both in and outside of school, uh, kind of laboratories that allow kids to develop the kinds of digital media competencies and skills that encourage them to really become active participants in the social media world, but also connect it right to what's happening in their local communities, also to connect it to their concerns and their anxieties about their future and about the world around them. And what, you know, what we're really seeing are these opportunities to create um, not only young learners, but empowered learners, and not only empowered learners, but kind of critical citizens, you know, young people who are thinking critically about their world, thinking critically about their communities, and leveraging their engagement with technology as a way to express that, those uh, kinds of uh, critiques, but also participate in the world that's around them. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. I think in terms, personally, in terms of the critical thinking, there's, there's been so much moral panic uh, among, among parents about the dangers of letting their kids online. And I think the statistics show that the, the, the stranger danger that, that, that is real is actually very tiny, and particularly compared to the danger of cutting your kids loose on the internet without any kind of training or guidance in thinking critically about the material that, that they're shown. Not that they don't learn from, from peers, but it's, it seems to be sort of given a lot of short shrift when people are think about what's dangerous about kids on the internet. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. And, and, I, and I think what we're, what we're beginning to see, Howard, over the last few years or so, is a subtle but I think important shift in terms of the conversations that we're having. Um, you know, I think, you know, parents are beginning to understand that, you know, this, this idea of, of building walls that prevent their kids from participating in the digital world, you know, even schools and teachers and educators, uh, I think more and more are beginning to realize that building those walls just not only does it not make sense, but in many instances, it's just a futile exercise. And, and, and so 
how do we begin to to create conversations and create a dialogue and create institutions and infrastructures that really empower our kids to to make smart decisions, empower our kids to really take it advantage of this wealth of information and social networks that exist out there. And so I do think we're kind of at a point in time in the net's early history, in digital media's early history, and particularly young people's adoption of it. We're at a point in time where I think we're turning a really important corner, right? A many corners to be turned, but one in which the conversation is less about, you know, trying to keep kids away from technology, but rather trying to empower and equip them with the skills and competencies that enable them to be really sort of active and dynamic and critical citizens in their engagement with technology. Beautiful. Go, Craig. I, I, I like what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you.